Oh, wait, hold on. We need the sink. Ready? One, two, three. Next. <laughs> I thought we were going to sing a song. No. <laughs> we can now that the audio synced up. I thought we were going to sing in rhythm together. Okay. All right, let's try again. Ready? Back streets two, back. back. All right. Do up, do up, do up. Hey, guys. Is that a real song? <laughs> I can't no. sing a fake song with you. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, this is still fake. <laughs> no, that's uh, Celine Dion. <laughs> yes. All right. We just saw the Zijokia. insane clown posse, the movie. <laughs> yeah, the documentary the about documentary. their uh, tour life. It was a uh, ten out of ten. Definitely go watch that. I cried. Um, <laughs> You know, I cried when the insane cloud posse started beating up random protesters. Yeah, it was beautiful. Pedestrians. We are the Tall Kings, and this is the Tall King Reviews. I'm Cody. This is Kevin. Hello. And we just saw Joker. That we did. What did you think? You, you know, enjoy yourself? I will have to say yes, mm. I did. And I... I don't say that because I'm a sadistic person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me just state that for the record. Right. I enjoyed the movie for its introduction of characters, its story. Like, there's some kind of progression for this character and other characters as a well. A lot, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of felt like a fly on the wall for... Mm. For the movie, which I, I didn't mind. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed this movie. And it is very refreshing, I would say, not just for movies in general, which I would say it kind of is, uh, but especially mm -hmm. for a comic book movie. Uh, I don't know. I hope it does well. Then we might see more. I don't know. This is just like it's such a serious take on a character. It's so not comic booky, which is kind of cool. A little bit Nolan-esque in that sense that it's just it's it really is just its own thing you know it's not taking from a specific source material or anything like that it just takes this idea of the Joker and then kind of runs with it and does its own thing with it gives their own take on that character's backstory and and what <laughs> makes him flip and become the Joker um, I got a little synopsis here I'm gonna read for you the uh, so it's set in 1981 which is funny because I actually Thought it was set in like the 60s for some reason. I don't know. Did you get that sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't entirely sure where the time frame was. It, it might have set at one point and I just missed it. I don't know. Right. Like I've, I got some kind of feel from it. it yeah, it definitely but it wasn't, wasn't set modern, modern day. times. Yeah. I, and I liked that. There was a lot of little things that, that kind of just made it um, sit in that time period and I think uh, I read that part of the reason that the director did that was so that he, <laughs> DC couldn't connect it to any of their other movies, any of their other expanded universe. Uh, like he did that specifically for that reason. <laughs> but I think it helps the movie. It's uh, it, it, it's set in Gotham, of course, but it looks very much. It's obviously New York City, right? It's set and it's like that really, really grungy New York City that we see in a lot of those '80s movies. So I think that kind of helps. Mm -hmm. Um. Everyone's smoking in the hospital. Even I like that. Yeah, I I felt it <laughs> added to what the story was. Yeah, like it just um, it just set the tone for like the, it it added everything right the atmosphere everything it just kind of yeah it, it it enhanced it than if it was set in modern day I feel right. the whole grungy feel everything like that it, it just, fits it really fits uh, our main character Arthur is a clown for hire whose life is just a series of misfortunes he lives with his mother. She needs to be cared for. I never really got the. Is she is she bedridden, or she just is old? What was the deal with her? Yeah, I think she's just kind of old. She's and just kind of dependent. Old. Yeah, very much dependent on him. He's even watching her in one scene. Uh, he tries his hand at stand up comedy, and that fails. He tries to uh, find. He's he's basically just the entire movie, trying to find his place in this world that keeps kicking him while he's down, figuratively and literally. Yeah. Uh, and it's very dark. It's def it's R rated. Uh, they don't overdo it though. It's not like yeah, 
Because there's some there's some of these R rated movies that are like, yeah, we're R rated and we're gonna just blood and the cursing. It's <laughs> Hellboy. <laughs> Hellboy, yeah, exactly. Um, but this movie, no, it, it's it just it, it's just telling a story, and and when the violence comes in and when the the cursing comes in, it's all to it's all just to accelerate that story and and this character. Um, you said it's like look being a fly on the wall. Yeah, totally. You know, it's you're just seeing this character kind of devolve into madness, and Joaquin <sighs> Phoenix is is fantastic. I mean, yeah. really, he's he's phenomenal. Gosh, dude, like the whole movie up until that end scene. Like, I feel everything that he does makes sense, yeah, at least for s- his character, right? The character progression is great. Yeah, motivations make sense. Uh, it, it 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 it's cool because we. <laughs> You, you get these movies sometimes, a lot of the time, I don't know. And the character motivations at the end don't necessarily make sense. So you have to squeeze it in to like fit this very structured narrative. This one though, it's just like, it's so, it's relatively small scale. You have these certain key characters that you've introduced and it just focuses on that and this character and everything that happens facilitates that one way or another. It facilitates right. his motivation, his his uh, uh, evolution or de-evolution into, into the Joker character. Um, and you're following a, a bad guy, right? But they're trying to make him... Uh, what's the word? They're trying to make him... Sympathetic. Sympathetic or... to some extent. So you can see where he's coming from, but that just makes him a more interesting character. If he was just a bad guy that like you felt nothing for him, then it's, well, what's the point? What's the point of following this character, you know? That you can sympathize with them and that you can kind of see how this could happen to this very specific person who has mental problems and all yeah. these things in this environment. Uh, it just adds to it and it, it makes it a better film. Yeah. I would have to agree. Yeah. Um, the So, yeah, the other characters freaking... Um, Zazie Beetz is in it. She's a sort of love interest for the Joker. She's pretty good. She serves a good purpose. She doesn't stand mm-hmm. out too much, but... Uh, not really supposed to either right she's true. just kind of there for for the plot yeah exactly uh the mother does a good job she's very old <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've seen her in the stuff before yeah she was i was just watching six feet under she's the mom in that too she's she she's still old in that show that was 20 years ago <laughs> yeah jeez hey good um, for her i what's his name I'm, I'm drawing a blank the robert de niro robert de niro he plays a kind of johnny carson-esque TV host, uh, he does a really good job. He he <laughs> he. I felt it like I'm, I was able to see through him and and actually see the character. Right. Oh yeah. Very good sets. Very good costumes. Um, you have this whole clown, this whole clown for hire business, which is a, a relatively big part of the the beginning of the film to set it up. That the character is a part of introduces all these characters. You get a little bit of. It, it's just, it's so real world almost, you know, the way they're interacting with each other. It's very, right. like, you know, kind of mean spirited almost. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the gigs that he's getting freaking suck, <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> like a sign twirler and he gets beat up. He goes to a children's hospital and he's just like, he's dancing around to a, a children's song. He has this awful job, right? And these people that he comes into contact with are just like warping his sense of life. That everyone is awful. Everyone yeah. in his life is awful. Right. And it makes you see how his character devolves. Right. Yeah. What did you think? It's funny. The score, <laughs> there's parts of the score that were reminding me of Revenge of the Sith that we had just watched. Did yeah. you get that at all? <laughs> very uh, orchestral. Yeah, it was very orchestral. There were a few beats in there that I was like, ha, huh, that's very, that sounds very familiar. It was good, though. It yeah. Heightened the film. I I want to applaud the people who did the trailers. <laughs> yeah, the trailer editing was very good. Man, that initial trailer, you know, I'll high five you maybe one day, but it just set the tone for the movie. Like I knew what I would kind of be expecting. Yeah, without being going too spoilery. into it, right? Without being too spoilery. So everyone, take note. <laughs> Please do that. Do not spoil the whole movie. But yeah, it set the tone really well. Yeah, it did. I agree. Yeah, I like the trailer too. 
without spoiling it, I don't know how much else I have to say. I liked, I just like the themes and I like the character. Yeah, I, I would. It was a simple movie, agree. you know. At the end of the day, it was a very simple film. I would watch it again, though. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was a little over two hours. It didn't feel like it. It was no. Yeah, very very well paced. Yeah, even the moments where, like, the shots are lingering. It's all warranted. It's interesting. Right. Well, that's the thing with a movie like this, right? With a movie that is more character focused and it's not like there's, there's no action scenes, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. the way not. you keep people interested. Part of it is, is the cinematography. And I think they did a great job. Really interesting shots. They set up. They make you feel stuff when they want you to, yeah. right? Like they'll have a close up to make you feel some kind of tension or they'll just slowly pan in or pan out and it just adds to what you or the character is feeling yeah back to joaquin his like his performance is so good he's so creepy right he comes off as so creepy and there's situations that he's put in and it's just like man this is so uncomfortable part of it's the writing part of it's his performance uh but it just like man i don't want to be here right now (laughs) (laughs) this character is making this situation just the most awkward awkward uh way that it could be uh, but I enjoyed that. I mean, that that really, that's a huge part of what made the performance so memorable, I think, is the uncomfortable moments. Oh, man, yeah. I, I'm curious to see what it took for him to figure out that laugh, because it's an, an, <laughs> it's an integral part of the movie. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, so he has a condition. This is kind of clever. He has a condition that he can't help himself but to laugh at certain Things that seem to stress him out, I think, is what it was. Right. He would just laugh. And uh, it's so un- it's a n- very unnerving laugh. I think you hear it in the trailer, too. Um, but, yeah, it's great. It fits that character really well. Yeah. What would you think? What would yeah. you rate it out of 10? Out of 10, wow. Um, what would I give it out of 10? I think, man, I'm, I'll probably shoot for the moon here. I'm going for a 9. Wow, well, yeah. I would, I would probably give it a like an 8.5. I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I'm, I was on the verge with a nine, but I think I'm going to go just under. I really, I, I I really liked it, though. Yeah. All right. Going into spoilers. I don't know how much there is to spoil. The the whole... I So one of the things... I didn't want to talk about this because I, I feel like they do a pretty good job of, of keeping it out of the trailers and stuff, but the whole Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne thing, I didn't love. Um, it felt... I liked him as the, as the, uh, the mayor... Or the mayor elect. He's trying to run for office and he's kind of playing this like very capitalist, you know. Oh, you vote me in, I'll help haul you out. Helping the little people, yeah. And then the people are revolting from this as as sparked on by the Joker killing these guys in a very brutal way in the right. subway. This is where the movie becomes R rated. I think yeah. it's about maybe a third or or halfway through the film. Oh he's man. on the subway and he these people are just beating the crap out of him again. And he has a gun, he pulls it out, and there's flickering of the lights, the subway as it's moving, so it's like you don't clearly see everything. Very tense, uh, and it comes almost out of nowhere, too. Uh, He kills all three of these dudes, and and it's so brutal, the last guy's climbing on the steps, you know? (laughs) Yeah, jeez. Very effective. See, at that part, for some reason, I thought thought he would have the mask at that point, but because they showed it in the trailer... For some reason, I thought he would need to do that at that point. Identity. Yeah, but yeah. it ended up being motivation, I guess, for I think it's him later the, in the movie. Yeah, and it's why the masks became a thing. Right. It was all those killings. Yeah, I like that he, he unintentionally inspired this whole revolution. In right. Gotham. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, very different. It's very different Joker from the Heath Ledger one, right? The Heath Ledger one is... It's funny because he's all about anarchy too, right? But he's much more calculated in everything that he does, whereas this one really was kind of just crazy doing whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know? It just happened to lead to all these things that caught fire. Right, literally. literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the whole Thomas Wayne stuff, I, I liked the Thomas Wayne character. Kind of, and I don't know if there was would be a clean way to do this, but the whole Bruce Wayne stuff felt a little bit forced, especially at the end when they show that his parents are getting killed. It's like, ah, yeah, I don't know if we needed that. Yeah, I especially since that. this is a one-off. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I feel like the 
introduction of him uh, as Bruce as a kid, I felt that was like halfway okay. Yeah, it was decent. But yeah, the the whole parents thing at the end, I was like, ah, man, that might be a little, a little too much. A little too much, yeah. <laughs> Especially on <laughs> coming out of Zorro, and it's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we didn't, and. <sighs> Especially like because that scene was edited near the end of the movie. Joker didn't see that, right? But yeah. he was like thinking of a joke. I don't know if that was just the editor. I kind of yeah. It's funny. I thought that too. It, that was a little weird. He's he's like I'm thinking of a joke, and then it flashes back to, uh, to Bruce with his parents dead, and it's like, well, is that that's is that not connected to this at all? That's kind of weird that you're it's showing not, that right now. Yeah, because he doesn't know about that. So why are they showing it right now? Yeah, that it, that it was weird. Maybe. Yeah, I uh, that's why. I, yeah, I wasn't really feeling that. But yeah. uh, I thought they would show. Uh, I mean, you know, him on top of the car. I don't know some something of him as a Joker. More so when he was like, "Oh, I'm thinking of a joke," and you wouldn't get it. Something that he had done personally, not 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 flashing back to this event that he had not witnessed. Yeah, that he had nothing <laughs> to do with. I mean, he kind of. He kind of inspired it, right? Because the I killer mean, he, said the it, same it's, thing, it's, and it's, it's like, his ah. fault, kind of everything that happened that night is kind of his fault. So it's inadvertently caused by him, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of weird too. All these they're they're watching Zorro, and then there's like that that benefit for Wayne, and all these rich people are watching uh, Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin, yeah, but it's 1981. I don't. I guess it could happen. <laughs> Maybe they had some kind of classic movie night, or yeah, I, it was for the benefit. I think is what it was, but still, yeah. it was weird. And they had music. They, they had a live music, orchestra. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe that was the same band. I don't know. Star Wars was out by then. That's all I'm saying. You know. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I I I did enjoy the film quite a bit. Uh. It's not even like I was knocking points off with my eight point five. It's more just like there was, I I liked it a lot, but it just like there's a like small things that kept it from from being as great as it could have been. I think, yeah. Um, and it's not even necessarily things I can pinpoint. Like there's there's the the Bruce thing, which could have been much better, but it's more just like overall, it's like yeah, this is really really good, you know. Yeah, I wonder uh, how much attention it's going to receive. Yeah, well, you want to know what it has on Rotten Tomatoes? Ooh, I'm interested. What would you guess? Um, probably not. Probably not 90. Uh, I don't know. Like 85? 84? It's got a 69% on Rotten Tomatoes. What? <laughs> 69? Yeah, and that's based on 300 critics, too, so that's that's quite a bit. Oh, shoot. What's the reason? Oh, man. Oh, a whole bunch of things. I'm not going to get into it now. I will point out, though, and this is totally unrelated. Captain Marvel got a 78. Ant-Man and the Wasp got an 88. What? (laughs) Humans suck. (laughs) Apparently. That's our review of the Joker movie. Humans suck. I'm sure it'll still do well, though. There's a lot of hype for it. The... the, um, the user rating was very good. I just, I do want more movies like this. I hope it does yeah. well for that reason. I think this is like really cool for a comic book movie. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope that they explore more things. It's not even that I want more tonally like this. I just want more comic book movies that take risks like this. Right. Um, I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it. Oh man, this was such a breath of fresh air mm-hmm. compared to like what we've been getting. Yeah. Comic Everything book compared to anything. Other. I mean, really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's its own standalone movie. We haven't gotten a movie that was, I was going to say tonally different like this since since the Nolan movies, but we got like Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, and those were both pretty dark too, so yeah, those just didn't work out. This one uh, happened to connect. They need to get uh, yeah. more actors who who can just hold it. Well, and more directors and story writers who are willing to tell this kind of story. Good right. on DC for you know funding this. It's cool. Yeah. Well, we're getting uh, that... Uh, Harlequin. I know. That's the funny thing is this is this is. I'm surprised we didn't get a trailer for it. This is. Uh, I think that's the next film 
from DC <laughs> yeah. is the Birds of Prey Harley Quinn movie. Yes, Birds of Prey. And that's like much more typical DC fare, right? Much more like trying to be a Marvel film type thing. So it's funny that they have these two sides. Um, yeah. But yeah, hopefully it does well. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. That was our review of The Joker. Uh, don't shoot up any theaters watching this movie. <laughs> okay, you're, guys. I thought you were going to say the... <laughs> I thought you were going to say the uh, the catchphrase. <laughs> Is that our new catchphrase? Yeah, don't <laughs> don't go into a theater and shoot it up because of this movie, people. And that's the talking. And <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for looking at the talking with your eels. Good night. What?